Good day everyone. This is the Sunday School Hour of Poor Lineage Baptist Church and today we'll be dealing on Sunday School Lesson number 12 entitled Victory Over National Decline. Our key verses are found on 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verses 12 to 15. The Bible says in verse number 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Our key verse is found on Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and this is a good memory verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. To continue, our lesson objectives, victory over national decline. At the conclusion of the lesson, you should be able to, number one, recognize the truth of our nation's leadership for a godly heritage. Number two, identify his role in bringing revival to our land. Number three, describe the prerequisites for successful prayer. And number four, name the facets of God's restoration of a nation. For our lesson outline, victory over national decline, item number one, seek personal revival. Letter A, my people. Letter B, my name. Item number two, seek prayerful renewal. Letter A, humble themselves. Letter B, pray. And item number three, which will be for next Sunday, seek powerful restoration. Letter A, God will hear. Letter B, God will forgive. Letter C, God will heal. As an introduction, President Rodrigo Duterte has declared January of every year as National Bible Month in recognition of the religious nature of the Filipino people and the elevating influence of religion in our human, human society. The third is proclamation number 124 also set every last week of January as National Bible Week. And this is a welcome move and this is good for our country. So we thank the leadership that has acknowledged the necessity of the Word of God for the country. As a continuation, there is also an ongoing PNP internal cleansing and they have used the Word of God as basis for this um, activity or event. It says here, I am, the vine, I am the true vine and you are my branches. We are happy for the opportunity also that we can be part of this um, um, squatting here. Uh, this is the time of um, the NP chief, Abayaldi, he says, and for the sake of the good cops who continue to work hard and sacrifice for the community that we serve, let us render our best effort to make sure that this program succeeds this time. Let us bear in mind that, the, that this is not for PNP alone, but for the rest of the Filipino people whom we serve and protect. This is talking about the PNP internal cleansing. And we appreciate these moves by our uh, national leadership. The decline of morals and character we, uh, we are seeing in our society today will only be reversed by following God's plan for national renewal. While the leadership of our nation acknowledges the importance of the Word of God, 
you would have to admit that the spiritual, moral, and family situation in our country today is desperately in need of revival and the need to have deep faith in God. God's plan for bringing revival to overcome national decline is laid out in 2 Chronicles. David wanted to build a temple for the nation in Jerusalem but was not allowed to do so. So David prepared the materials and his son Solomon oversaw construction of the project. During the dedication week, God appeared to Solomon and gave him a promise for the nation. If the point came where, because of their sins, God began to judge his people, there was something they could do. These same ingredients are applicable for any nation that is experiencing God's hand of judgment for turning away from Him. Here's a specific example. The 12 tribes of Israel based on Genesis, Numbers, and Revelation. In the book of Genesis 29 to 30, there are 12 tribes mentioned here. And these are the following, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Nathalie, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. While in Numbers 1, here are the following tribes mentioned. Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Dan, Nathalie, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Benjamin. What's not present here in Numbers is um, Joseph and Levi. What about in Revelation 7? Here it mentions Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Manasseh, Naphtali, God, Asher, Ezekar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. Who are not present here? It's the tribe of Dan and Ephraim. Based on the book of Judges and the book of Hosea, the tribe of Dan and Ephraim turned their back against God and served idols. That's why in Revelation 7, they are no longer found here. God hates idolatry. And we must remember that. God gives us a prescription for national revival and renewal. Sometimes we look around at our nation that has turned away from God. We wonder, what can we do? Where can we begin? When we need help from heaven, we must begin with an honest evaluation of our own lives. As individual Christians, we can make a difference for our nation. Item number one, seek personal revival. Revival is an invasion from heaven that brings a conscious awareness of God. National revival is really nothing more than a collection of individual revivals. An awareness of the presence of a holy God changes the way people live. As Filipinos, we need to seek personal revival. Under this letter A, my people, when you seek personal revival, it's in, it involves the people of God. It says this letter A, my people. The word my in 2 Chronicles 7.14 indicates to us that there are some who are God's people and some who are not. In our age of inclusive theology, often someone says, well, we are all God's children. This is simply not true. Jesus told some of the leading religious figures of his day, ye are of your father, the devil. In John 8, 44. What a blunt declaration. My people, only those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior are actually God's people, and that is Amen. God's plan for national revival begins with His people who have been born into His family. Being born in our so-called Christian country, the Philippines, does not make a person Christian. Only accepting Jesus Christ as Savior does that. Letter B. Not only my people, but my name. At that time, God gave the promise of revival to Solomon. 
the Jewish nation was called by God's name. Since the first century, believers in Jesus have been known by the, na by the name Christians, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch in Acts chapter 11, verse 26. The name was actually given to the believers by the enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were committed to following Jesus and living as He did. The name Christian literally means Christ-like or Christ followers. Mahatma Gandhi said, If not for a Christian, I would have been a Christian. I like their Christ, but I don't like their Christians. That is the saying of Mahatma Gandhi. It would be wonderful if those who knew us best and saw us the most could tell from the way that we live that we were following Jesus. Do not be ashamed of the name Christian. We have a lot of secret service Christians today who do not want to be identified. They are not proclaiming that they are Christians. Unsa may example ani, usay ug magkaon sa restaurant, maowaw kung mugampo. Usay magkuha og panyo para tabuna ang bakba o ang naong para lang pagampo og pagdali kay maowaw. Dapat din ato ang ikaowaw ang pagkakristohanon. Di sa nato ikaowaw ang pagampo. We can do this with boldness in front of others. As true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, be willing to stand up and be counted as a child of God. Hope this is the conviction of all believers in WinBC. Item number two, seek prayerful renewal. In the 1850s, the Fulton Street Prayer Revival began. A businessman named Jeremiah Lamphere decided to invite others to meet with him at noon each day for prayer. A small room on the third floor of the Fulton Street Church was secured for that first meeting. On that day, Lamphere found himself all alone in a room with 20 chairs. After 20 minutes, a few men wandered in. From one, it became six. Six men were present at the first meeting. Lamphere continued to invite others. As the days passed, a handful of praying men turned into several dozen. Soon the church at Fulton Street was too small to hold the crowd gathering. Arrangements were made across the city to host the gathering. Within a few weeks, over 10,000 people were meeting daily for prayer in New York City. What a testimony! There was no formal preaching. Rarely was there even music. Anyone who would wish could have five minutes to address the group. The power of the revival was the thousands of believers gathering to pray. Requests were read out and sent in from around the country. The prayer movement spread across the country in Chicago, Philadelphia, and other large cities of the United States. The power of the revival was just as strong. Seek prayer for renewal. According to estimates, as many as 1 million people have been saved between 1857 and 1859 as a direct result of this prayer revival. A national renewal comes through the prayers of God people, God's people who are called by His name as they diligently seek His face. Under this, item number two, seek prayerful renewal. Letter A, humble themselves. Humility goes against the grain of our culture, yet the spirit and attitude of prayer requires humility. Kanibitang garbuso, maghuna-una man, nga kaya niya, dili siya kinahang lang tabang, so dili siya kinahang lang lang muampo. Peter said, For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, God does not want to be around proud people. 
He looks for the heart that is willing to acknowledge a need and dependence on Him. The very first thing on the list of sins that God hates is pride. This is found in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. The Bible says, This six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto Him. What are these? A proud look, that's really number one, pride. A lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, an heart that devised wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. God hates pride, so we must be humble. Humble themselves. God is looking for humble people. In Psalm 34 verse 18, it says, the Lord is near unto them that are, that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite, meaning caused by or showing sincere remorse, filled with a sense of guilt and a desire for atonement. This is a contrite spirit. God is looking for these people. Humble themselves. Not only humble, let her be pray. Prayer is an assault. On our human autonomy it is an acknowledgement for our need of help Jesus told his disciples that men ought always to pray and not to faint in Luke 18 1 the unstated corollary is that when we do not pray we will faint meaning we will become weak and dizzy and close to losing consciousness this is the meaning of faint we must seek God's help in dealing with our personal and national need for revival. Prayer also involves turning away from our sins. Kay lisud maning mo ampo ka, umingin ka nga, Lord, pasaylo ako, kay nakakawat ko, o lima kamanok. Unya, pagkahuman, uh, ingnon ka, for example, nagkumpisal ka sa pare, ingnon ka nga, sige, pag ampo dito, lima kaamahan na mo, unya, umingin ka nga, Pwede himoon na lang og napulo, padre, kay doon na pa ko'y balikunon nga lima. So, anang hid na daan. Prayer involves turning away from sins. It is important to note that God said His people needed to turn from their wicked ways. We cannot expect to see a revival by getting the abortionists to close shop or the homosexuals to repent. What is God's requirement? Revival begins when God's people turn from their sins. God's message to His people is to turn from our sins. He said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Repentance is turning away from wicked ways or turning away from sin. Pray. God's message to the church at Laodicea and to his church today is to turn from our wicked ways. Someone said, Revival is a new beginning of obedience to God. Again, revival is a new beginning of obedience to God. You need to be willing to change your mind every time the Lord convicts your heart. Seek personal revival. Seek prayerful renewal. Be humble. Be prayerful. Turn from our wicked ways. Let us stop cheating. Let us stop evil thoughts. Let us stop telling lies. Let us stop fighting. Let us stop hating. Let us stop pride. Let us turn from our wicked ways. Because this is the requirement of God for revival. As a summary, lesson number 12. Victory over national decline. Number one, seek personal revival. It's the people of God that God is calling first. My people, let there be my name. Those who are Christians, because without Christ we are nothing. And those people who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ are the people of God. These are the people who, is, who are called by the name of God. Seek 
personal revival. It must begin from us. Item number two, seek prayerful renewal. Humble themselves, letter A, and pray. Importante good nga kita dili garbuso. Kinahanlan kita mo angkon nga nanginahan lang tagtabang diya sa gino. Dili na to makaya sa atong kaugalingon. That's why we need to humble ourselves. And then pray. Pray for guidance. Pray for blessing. Pray for wisdom. Pray for God's intervention so that there will be victory over national decline. Item number three, which will be for next Sunday. Seek powerful restoration. Letter A, God will hear. Letter B, God will forgive. Letter C, God will heal. Victory over national decline. It must start from us. Thank you and God bless us all. This ends the Sunday School lesson today.